Yeah, interesting, Wayne. So the, the Collaborate, Coordinate, Document, Deliver um, idea. And, you know, computational design is often um, thought of as something that could be used in design, obviously, but also optimization, uh, uh, op optioning, and, you know, automation of you know, repetitious tasks. But I guess, you know, some people think when, when they see computational design, they see that radical or, or complex blobby shape. Um, being in your office, I see quite a different range of, of projects. Um, how are you utilising, you know, this technology for your different design that you do? I think that's a that's a good place to start, isn't it? With with the design, I think we do we do work on a range of projects, everything from small through to large scale. Which, well, we're large for Australia anyway, um, and some could be considered to be geometrically, uh, I suppose, challenging. But the style of architecture, I think, if you're familiar with our architecture, is we they everything could really be produced using um, traditional methods. But the key we've found, however, is not the complexity of the forms that we're designing, but the freedom that computational design gives us to quickly um, assess those ideas in different situations. So to, to find the right application for this approach, I suppose we've been working on it, as you know, for, for a few years. But so what I like to do, I suppose, is take through people through a few examples of how we sort of progressed our, our nature in this, sort of starting with what I like to call you know, the little small steps. So you know, back in 2010, I think, was our that was Milo. So well, you know, early on was one of the first light bulb moments for me. I think in the use of computational design within our office um, was a simple ramp project that we did for the Art Gallery of New South Wales. I'll just play a little video. So this sort of just shows the ramp, just going through a few iterations that we actually did, and and as you can see in the top right hand corner, we've got a couple of variables that are just updating automatically along the way: the ramp length, the gradient, and the sort of landings along the way. And what this did was it really gave us that instant feedback and on the code requirements while we were still in that early phases. And it allowed us to get to this solution very quickly and knowing those requirements were under control, I think. So the next sort of area that we moved into was starting to use the technology for exploration along the way. So taking some thick, quick thoughts and sketches like this just on tracing paper and then working them towards, you know, we've got a bit more of a complex, like modeling complex forms, but we wanted to get area schedules concept documentation, I suppose some physical models and some concept visualizations out of the process as we were going. So it's a bit of an experiment, I think, in this in this in this scheme. Um, and here you can sort of see I'll just play a little video of this sort of gives you an idea of that we you can see it being developed. Hopefully yes, you can see it being developed. It's utilizing things like law curves and nodes like that that actually give us the ability to to make the design flow a bit more naturally around the building. But then also dividing the panels up into you know, polygons and then applying, say, G and T's to the to the polygons to just to give us that little bit of detail in the facade so we can do our visualizations and things like get a real feel for the building. And then from there, it's pretty much a matter of we could produce our area schedules out of the model, which is was a great thing to check against the code requirements. We could get our plans and we can get some diagrammatic elevations for that that proposal as long as along with the visualizations that we were doing. So there's a couple of options that we did along the way. And then finally, we produced some small 3D prints of each of the options that we'd come up with. And this was all done in probably a week and a half. So it was a quick process. But I think utilizing that process where it was utilizing computational design from the beginning to the end is not something that we actually typically do, I think. What we typically do is probably a hybrid approach between things. One example I think I've shown in the past is where we use computational design to reduce the time between design iterations. It's really speeding up that process. So this is a tower we're working on in Sydney. And through the original uh, initial design process, we developed a method of combining the drafting skills that everyone had in the office to drive model iterations along the way. So things like producing, say, um, the profiles of each slab level that actually dr drives the facade envelope along the way. But it also started to develop the method of using colors along the way to describe facade types. And this is an, I think this is a... a um, idea that was sparked after a finals presentation a few years ago for the YII a few years ago, where I think they were doing um, colors in Excel to drive unit types, which was great. So play a video. So this is an idea of, this is one of the models that we, from that uh, initial design phase, I suppose, building up this repetition model, um, giving us an idea that we could 
really produce this. And what, what we've done, we'd actually built this a couple of times manually before we moved to, to GC, and it gave us a guide on how long this took and what the advantages were. So, and, and what ended up happening was we actually realised that what was taking someone one week to do, we can now effectively do in four hours. And I think that brings us to uh, sort of one of our most recent projects, uh, which tries to bring together some of those examples that I just showed from sort of small steps up until that iteration process. And it's sort of exploring those ideas through iteration. And here you can see, this is the GC graph view of, of this sort of concept. And... It can look a little little messy, I think, but this is sort of typical of a of a concept uh, graph view, I suppose, where you're sort of cutting pieces out that don't work and putting your new bits in and testing things out. But I think, however, we try to utilise things like colours to try and group elements of the graph together. But the key here is understanding variables and how to how to use those to drive the the design and the iteration process. So here you can see we've got a. I've zoomed in on the actual variables that we're using for this project. And the ones on the left we sort of started with, so you've got typical things like wall thickness or building heights, rotation for this building. You've got inner and outer radius because this building was going to be a circular building. And then finally, as we worked through the model, we actually started to add some more variants on the right. So if I show a video, we can actually see some of those, those iterations, those steps that we could actually take using the model and it actually flowed through and, and, and had this circular concept. And this is the initial exploring the ideas for a circular concept for the Founders Memorial in Singapore that we came up with. And here you can see this is sort of one of the early concept forms that was then developed into this final scheme. So I think bringing it back to that question of design, we're continually trying to find those opportunities to leverage the computational tools to aid the, the, our design process, especially when it comes to that sort of iteration process where we're sort of stepping through different design ideas and testing out those really quickly. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.